good morning, welcome, welcome to Gateway Vineyard. Really thrilled that you just joined us this morning. My name is Craig with my wife Hannah. We lead Gateway Vineyards with sites in Norwich and Beckles. I'm just really thrilled that you've joined us this morning. I was just reminded of a worship song uh, this week, um, an old vineyard worship song. It's old now, I remember it coming out, but it is getting on now. And it basically says this, it says, Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give him your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. And I want to encourage us this morning just to come. Come as we are. Come as we are, expectant that we will meet God in that place. Come as we are, just to, in this time of worship. Come as we are together, albeit we're in different places. Let's come together and worship him this morning. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you come into all the places and the spaces that we're gathered this morning? And would we come into this time of worship fully expectant that we would meet you in this place? May we all be able to come. The invitation is to us all this morning, whether we've known you for years or whether we're still journeying and exploring uh, who you are. I want to invite, we are, we are all invited to come this morning into this time of worship. Thank you, Jesus. So why don't we hand over to the band. Let's come together with our voice, with our song, and let's worship him this morning. Forever 
this is all about you. Would you captivate our hearts afresh this morning, Jesus? Whatever things have got in the way, Lord, where other things have become a priority. first love, that fresh encounter with you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, would we just find you more beautiful again? May we just be captivated and struck down in awe by your wonderful love, your majesty, your goodness, your kindness, your mercy your justice, your righteousness. Let's sing that one more time. And Jesus, you are. And Jesus, you are. Oh, so Mark, I'm part of the team here at Gateway Vineyard, and uh, I hope your August is going well so far. We've had some sunshine, and we've been able to relax and enjoy, maybe switch off from work or from school or college, um, whatever it's been. Or perhaps you're thinking, I'm going to wait till it all dies down and then those kids go back to school and it's a little bit quieter, then I'm going to take um, my holiday and my break. Well, whatever your plans, we um, pray God's blessing over it, that you get rested and recharged um, in this season as well. I want to let you know about some stuff that's coming up in the life of church for you to connect in with. And so our next event is for the guys of the church. And we're organizing a beach breakfast at Sea Pauline on Saturday, the 14th of August, this coming Saturday um, at 7 a.m. I know super early, but it'll be worth it. And there'll be coffee. I promise you there'll be coffee. Um, so we'd love you to join us. The sign up link is on screen. It's really simple. It's gtwy.ch, our short link forward slash men. Couldn't be easier than that. Um, so we'd love you to invite some mates, um, whether it's a work colleague, it's a neighbor, or someone you've been chatting to over the, these last 15, 16 months, why not invite them? It's something a little bit different. Um, it's really kind of low risk. So come to the beach, have some breakfast. Well, you can go for a swim, or you can play some cricket or rugby, or just bring a chair, sit down, enjoy the outside early morning space um, while you have some breakfast um, as well. So. We'd love to see you there. We'd love you inviting people. Um, it's going to be a great time together. But you need to sign up by the middle of this week so that we can buy the food, make sure we've got enough for everybody. So um, deadline of this is Wednesday. So why not do it now? Send the message, do the invite, get them signed up. And we would love um, to see you there on Saturday. Well, the other thing we've been talking about coming up is um, in September, on the 19th of September, is our relaunch of our Sunday morning gathered spaces. We are so excited um, for this. It's going to be great to see each other in person. Some of you have joined us since we've been online, and so your experience of Gateway has been a screen, um, and you're only getting a, a smidge of what it is to be part of our family and our community. And so we're so excited to get 3D with you in a room um, and so there'll be more details um, around how do you kind of book in and how do you become part of that um, and get spaces but 
what we're doing in this stage is the planning and the relaunching. Um, and so this is something that's gonna take all of us to do it well and to ensure that the space and that it's safe for everybody. It's still a, a major priority and a value for us is to love God, to love each other. And so when we gather together, we wanna to do that well, we wanna do that safely. Um, and we're really keen that this isn't just a small handful. You know, the reality is we're not gonna do this if it's just a small handful of people working really, really hard to kind of create a space for others to come and just consume church. That's not what we're doing this for. This is not what we value about the gathered spaces where we get to bring our gifts, whatever we've got, and we lay it down um, to be a blessing for those um, around us and part of our community. And we get to encounter God in that space and be blessed by others as we gather together. So this is about us all coming, all contributing, um, bringing our time, our energy, our gifts and our talents and skills um, to be a blessing to each other and to the wider um, community around us as well. So we'd love you to join our team um, in this. And there's lots of different opportunities available. Um, and some of you might say, I am all in. I'm just ready to help. Those first six weeks I can anticipate are gonna be kind of finding your feet a little bit and just kind of all hands in. So count me in, whatever you need me to do, I'm there for you. Or others of you might think, well, you know, I, I used to do this team, um, but actually in the last 18 months, I'm feeling like I'd like to try something else and I'd like to have a go at something like this or this interests me. I'd like to find out more. I'm not quite ready to say definitely, but I'd like to find out more. Well, select that option on the relaunch um, link and one of the team will be in touch. And we're gonna invite everybody who's kind of signed up, who's volunteering, who's part of team and saying, yep, I'm all in still for Planet Kids. I love Planet Kids. I love seeing those kids encounter Jesus, build community and step into what it is God's got for them and seeing the kingdom of God come for that little age group. I'm still there, brilliant. We'd love to see you. We'd love to invite you on the 12th um, of September, the week before the relaunch, as we worship together, but then we spend time in our teams getting to know each other and uh, going through the new procedures, the new plans, how we're doing things to make sure everyone's trained and feels ready um, to, for the relaunch on the following week. We want to make sure there's space um, for everyone to come and for new people to come as well. Um, and we want to do this really, really well and really safely. So um, get involved. You get to contribute your part to it. Um, and we're so excited for that. So head to the forward slash relaunch link, sign up for whatever you're interested in. Um, and uh, one of the team will be in touch with an invitation to find out more um, on the 12th and more details to follow. In terms of the actual service, we'll release more details in September, close to the time, so you know how you can engage and come along um, on that Sunday and subsequent Sundays from there as we feel our way back into regathering in person um, in our home at Norwich High School for girls. Well, I think that's it from me this week and just to really encourage you as the summer continues, if you've not had a chance to review your kind of rule of life and your rhythms and practices and, and are aware that they've, they've changed because of the, just the holidays and the rest of it, just encourage you, spend a moment this week just really reflecting. Um, and you know, is there an opportunity for you to engage and encounter um, with Jesus in a different way because of this time of year um, and your change of rhythm and routine? Um, and to hang out together, send an invite, meet somebody up for a walk or a drink or a barbecue, whatever it is. Um, continue to build community in this time of rest and recuperation over the summer. And we look forward to seeing you in real life, in person, um, in September when we relaunch. Well, that's it from me. I'm gonna hand over now for the next part of this morning's service. God bless. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Annie, and I'm continuing our series on the fruit of the spirit and uh, this week we're looking at patience uh, this is a first for me uh, I wish I could see all your faces it's really strange not to be it also means I can't see if you are uh, looking attentive or bored or falling asleep or going out to the loo or uh, struggling with children I can't see any of those things uh, but you can see me so uh, Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and rest on us as we listen. Father, thank you that we have to ask and you send your Holy Spirit. Come now and speak to us this morning. Amen. Um, years ago on holiday in France, we were dependent on the old phone boxes. And I don't know if any of you know what they were like. Uh, when we wanted to make a call home, 
and uh, often it took loads of money and sometimes it wasn't very successful uh, but on the phones it said patiente svp silvo play please and uh, it's i've never ever forgotten it and it's a little phrase uh, that has stayed in my mind apparently in it kind of means please hold but for me that patiently wait patiently wait has stayed with me please wait patiently and I say it to myself and I sometimes say it to other people. Um, some friends of ours live in a little village uh, called Pasio, uh, right near Perpignan and uh, they are viticulteurs, they have their own vineyards. Um, one of their sons is now mayor of the village which is wonderful. Um, he's doing a fantastic job, he's following Jesus, he's trying to bring the kingdom in in their village in any way that he can and he's doing lots of wonderful things in the village so we're quite excited about that. Um, here we have some pictures of their vines. Growing vines along with a lot of other farming um, needs lots of patience. It's hard work, it requires dedication and just the process of buying new vines and planting them, waiting for the years before they really bear fruit and tending them, pruning them so hard every year that they look dead for some of the months of the year and then watching them grow with all the threats of weather and disease to watch out for and respond to, hoping and praying for a successful harvest. In Galatians 5, Verse 21 to 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Excuse me, I just need a drink. The fruit of the Spirit are evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, the Holy Spirit is a gift. Jesus said, if anybody wants the Holy Spirit, ask the Father. He's going to generously give him to you. So if you want the Holy Spirit, ask. It's a gift. It can't be bought or earned. You, you can't work hard at it and then get it. It has to be asked for and received. A tree can't make fruit grow. It can't strain struggle and groan and produce fruit. Um, Craig mentioned that and he also said in his introduction to the series, uh, when it is rooted in the right place, <clears throat> excuse me, with the right soil, with the right life and health flowing through it, it will produce fruit. If it is badly diseased, the disease might kill it. But if there is enough health in the tree, it will overcome the disease and still bear some fruit. The fact is God makes it grow and the Holy Spirit brings life to us. If we are in the right soil, rooted in the right foundations, if we soak in good, healthy ways, seeking God's presence, if we choose to abide or remain in him, to live in him and do what he says, and uh, some of the practices that we learned earlier on in the year of the rules of life uh, will help that. We will bear fruit, and part of that fruit will be patience. In John 15, in the message, it says, Live in me, make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. The definition of patience in the Oxford languages is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Another definition is patience is a person's ability to wait out something or endure something tedious without getting riled up. What a challenge. How patient are we? I think some of us are naturally more patient than others, 
but maybe in different ways. And I just wondered, I'm going to show you a few pictures, and I just wondered how you might respond uh, to some of these situations. I wonder how you feel about waiting in a queue. I have a husband who would rather drive five miles than wait in a queue. And uh, how are we about queuing? How are we about handling children having tantrums or teenagers with bedrooms like that? How are we as we argue? And do we have patience in creativity? So many creative people need a huge amount of patience, as do bakers and other professions as well and a farmer too so much patience needed if you are a gardener or a farmer in uh, sowing seeds waiting 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 for them to grow and patience is sometimes very hard to come by there's a little rhyme that's often quoted in our home um, quoted differently according to who's quoting it Jeff changes the words but it says patience is a virtue possess it if you can seldom in a woman and never in a man very sexist, uh, but uh, yes, patience in life is difficult. We live in an instant society. If you want something, you need to get it as soon as possible. If you wanna, if it's something uh, material that you want, you use credit. Waiting or saving is foreign for many people. We have instant meals, takeaways, hurry, hurry, hurry. Um, retirement, and then more particularly lockdown, um, what I, uh, has made me just aware of how much I hurry, hurry, hurry through life. I work through deadlines in my head. And in lockdown, I realised I was still working through deadlines in my head, lists of things to do, to accomplish, um, and hurrying through them. And I found myself consciously trying to slow myself down, saying it doesn't matter if I get this done today or not. It doesn't matter what I accomplish. Having four children, and we've got 12 grandchildren now, and then leading a church, and with an inbuilt desire and natural instinct to rise to challenges and maybe prove something about myself, I have rushed through so much of my life. The only real breaks coming if we go away on holiday or I go on a retreat for a week or a weekend or a day. When Ortberg, John, sorry, John Ortberg quoted Dallas Willard in his book, Soul Keeper. Um, excellent book, I totally recommend it. The one sentence though that stuck out for me was, ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. I thought, how on earth do you do that? Well, John Ortberg is also John Mark Comer's mentor. And as some of you know, he has written an excellent and very challenging book on that very subject about eliminating hurry from your life. So although I can be very patient with people sometimes to have my agenda or my routine interrupted by them, to be generally available to God was and still is very difficult at times. Lots of people in the Bible had to wait patiently, sometimes through really, really tough times. In Hebrews 6, it says, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. He had to wait a long time. Most of life involves patience. There are different seasons in our lives. Sometimes we're waiting for births, waiting for deaths, waiting for healing, waiting for provision, waiting for God to act. In James 5, he says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, 
patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. The more I give my time and days and agendas over to God, the more I surrender them to him, the more I see him at work, and the more I have patience for the things that don't get done or that I really have to wait for. God is always at work. There's always something happening. And sometimes we are the project. In waiting, God works on us. There used to be a t-shirt that said on it, be patient, God hasn't finished working with me yet. Patience with people. I think that I have quite a lot of patience with people, but I often wonder if that's really an avoidance of conflict. I'm a real peace lover and I hate conflict. So sometimes I keep quiet rather than challenging people. So it could be seen as patience. Maybe it's not. The hardest people to have patience with are usually the people that we live with, who are closest to us. Our partners, our children, our families, maybe our colleagues or boss at work. In 1 Corinthians it says in chapter 13, love is patient, love is kind. Love is patient. That's the first thing, love is patient and then love is kind. If we truly love someone, we will have patience with them. But we say, come on, our husbands, our wives, our partners, our parents, our children, our boss, they just drive us around the bend. What can help? Let's have patience with them. Something that I found really helps is that little phrase, walk a mile in their shoes. Think about what it's like to be them in their world, thinking like them, feeling like them. It helps if you listen to them. <laughs> Some men might be thinking now, listen to my wife, she nags me all the time. I really don't want to keep listening to that. Do I really have to listen to more of that? Or some women might be thinking, he won't talk. He just disappears into his man cave or man shed or his little world. How do I get him to talk? So there's lots of challenges along the way. Love is patient. Love is kind. If we have compassion on someone, we will ask God for help and try and find out what it is like to be them. To accept them and to understand them and to believe in them the way God believes in them. And then we will have more patience with them. In some ways, as Jeff and I get older, our love for each other gets stronger and deeper and more content. But some of the more challenging thoughts and feelings and behaviours get worse. Sometimes that's driven by anxiety or ageing or, you know, years ago I put a notice up in our kitchen that says it doesn't matter. And that was because so many, much of our bickering and disagreements were based on things that really didn't matter. But I know as we get older, we age differently. We, some, we get slower, we get slower in our thinking, we get slower in our actions and we do things differently. And we're all different, you know, Jeff and I are different. I think we're gonna need loads more patience with each other as we get older. Help, help. That's the really good thing. We can cry out for help. We cannot strain and work at being more patient. We can't pretend that things aren't happening. What we can do is feed ourselves on believing the best about one another, asking God to help us see one another as he does, looking for the good things in our difficult boss or our difficult neighbour, choosing to love when love is difficult, choosing to accept and choosing to forgive. But patience is a gift that comes with being filled with the Holy Spirit. In Romans 8, 25, it says, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 
Now, this is a passage about prayer, but it's also true of every fruit of the Spirit we need. We can cry out to God. We can surrender and lay down our agenda, pour out our anger and frustrations and grievances to him. Ask him to show us how he sees the person we're trying to love and be patient with. He can give us the love and patience we need. One of the big challenges is being patient with God. Patience with God. In Psalm 37 it says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. In Psalm 40 it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. Some of us have been waiting a long time for God to answer our prayers, to speak to us or to change relationships or situations. In Psalm 27 verse 13 it says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart or take courage and wait for the Lord. Sometimes this is so hard. My dad is a hundred. He's in an increasing amount of pain. He's got um, uh, problems with his spine and uh, he's on morphine, has been for the last two and a half years. And he's waiting to go to heaven. He's, uh, I said to him recently, God, look, uh, Dad, I'm really praying that God will take you. And he said, not as much as I am. He really wants to go to heaven. But he knows God has heard his cry and trusts that God has a purpose in him still being here. And when I was preparing this and I'm thinking about him, Psalm 16 came to mind and I actually took it in and read it to him because it is so true for him. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. And Dad, despite his very real honesty about his suffering, is able to rejoice. His heart is glad, he's able to joke, he's able to talk and laugh. It's all about perspective. Focusing on God being good and his steadfast, unconditional love for us and choosing to trust him even when we don't understand. The other thing is that God is patient with us. In 2 Peter it says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The fantastic news is that God will never give up on you. And so we mustn't give up on ourselves. We need to be patient with ourselves. Some of us are very quick to be negative about ourselves, condemning ourselves and sometimes giving up. And we need to love ourselves. We need to be gentle and kind and patient with ourselves. To finish, I cannot think about being loving and patient without the word grace. I love the word grace. I love what it is. We need to live in the fullness of his grace, which means loving and giving others what they don't deserve. In every letter written by Paul, he starts by saying, grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you grace and peace to you. When we are full of grace and peace, we will have patience with one another. And he says, grace and peace 
come from God and his son, Jesus Christ. They come from them. They are a gift. Peter, in his letters, says, Grace and peace to you in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace to you in abundance. Receive his grace and peace. Live in his grace and peace. And the fruit of the Spirit will grow naturally in you. That includes patience. Overflowing in grace and peace will bring more and more patience. I'm just going to finish by reading Galatians in the Passion Version to finish. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, let's just wait on God. Lord, come. Come and speak to us now. Come and stir us up. Come and fill us, Lord. If there's somebody or some situation that you are finding it really hard to have patience with, or maybe there's lots, let's bring them to the Lord now. Let's surrender them to him. Mention the names of the people. Mention the situations to him, quietly or out loud. Just bring them to him, though, in your heart. Surrender your anger or your frustrations or your hurt and pain. Lord, you say that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you also said, Lord Jesus, that we can ask for the Holy Spirit. So we ask, Holy Spirit, that you'll come now and you will flow through us with your presence, your healing, your love your forgiveness and your patience, Lord. Flood us with your patience. Give us a compassion and understanding of people that we find difficult. Help us to see people the way you do. Help us to walk a mile in their shoes. Give us understanding, Lord. And Father, I just pray too that you'll help, especially those who are waiting for you to move, waiting for your healing, waiting for you to change something, waiting for you to speak to them when they don't feel they've heard your voice for a while. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Lord bless us, may we walk this week with you, filled with your spirit, looking to you and enjoying the fact that you never ever give up on us and you are always at work in us. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs>